Craig and Jackie here with Photo RV. We're up just before dawn in Mesa, Arizona. We're going on a big, big adventure today, so grab all your gear. Let's go. Let's go. So today we arrived in the remote suburban location of Gilbert, Arizona to the Riparian Preserve at Water Ranch. Be very quiet. Be very, very quiet. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. <laughs> It's another one of those places that is just great because you can do as much or as little as you want. It really uh, matches reclamation with recreation. We just happen to be talking with uh, a neighbor of ours. Shout out to Mike. Shout hey Mike, Mike. Thanks. thanks. Thanks Mike for the idea. And this is just a local state park, which we... It's a local city park. It's a local city park, Municipal. which with all the other parks closed, uh, I, we weren't, oh look at this guy. We're just adventuring in our own backyard. Look at this guy fishing. Doesn't he know there's no fishing on the bridge? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll show him the sign. Sunrise is, is just happening over the mountain, and this bridge is in the perfect location to be what I call up light. So we're the, the, when the sun completely rises, it will be behind us, and we're hoping to catch some of the geese and the ducks and the other waterfowl either taking off or landing right towards us. What are you shooting there? kind of a duck that I don't know what it is. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's the only one like him. So what they've done here is really cool. They've taken a water resource management facility that is a series of aquifer ponds and they alter the level of these ponds not just to manage the local water supply but to diversify the types of uh, water environments. One might be conducive to a certain type of bird, another a certain reptile, and they've combined that with a park. You can bike, you can run. You wouldn't know that we're in this uh, wilderness preserve and Phoenix is just just there. We've really loved it out here today. Lots of different areas to go to each time you visit and lots of different animals to see. At the northeast corner of the park is an observatory that they open to the public uh, every week. They have weekend events all the time and 90% of it is stargazing. So another great place, for lots to do here. Lots to photograph. We've seen rabbits and squirrels and lots of different kinds of birds, lots of waterfowl. Rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season. Lots of turtles and lots of big hungry fish. And a pangolin. some footage of all the stuff we're going to show you and we're going to show you some images that we take while we're here and maybe give you some insights as to how we're doing it. Yeah. So because there are so many ponds here 
and just just inlets like we're in a little inlet we have to we might uh, be walking down a trail and see a great scene or or an animal that we want to shoot but we've got to be mindful of where the sun's coming from so everything has to come together our position relative to the sun the subject that we're shooting and sometimes we just take what we can get but today we are just hitting it out of the park the uh, the, this egret that's fishing right here is keeps facing into the sun almost like we'd set him up for a portrait and there's there's a catch light in his eye and then just at the right time he catches a fish or a frog just incredible but so everything is coming together today last night we were here and we're trying to get some ducks taking off and landing but uh, it was getting dark and the sun was behind them so it really is uh, a matter of timing with wildlife and landscape photography. Timing and position, and subject, and camera. So Craig, help me out a little bit. When we're shooting bunnies and, and, I'm, and they're under a bush on the trail, which is sh shadowy and dark, and then I'm jumping over here and I'm trying to shoot the bright, bright, bright white, say that three times fast, the bright white egret, in the full sun how can i how can i move between those two things quickly so a big challenge shooting in this environment where there might be a rabbit under some brush and then there's a white egret in the bright sun is changing all of the settings changing all of the settings from uh, one scene to the next and they could be feet apart so you really have to have some baseline settings for example, I know uh, if I let the camera meter on this white egret, it would have me shoot at a very high uh, shutter speed, which would make him too dark. It's like shooting a bride in a wedding dress. It's like shooting in a snowy scene. So you really have to find a setting that works for the day or for the, the current situation. The position of the sun is where it is and once you have that set you have to disregard what the meter says as you uh, uh, photograph something dark and that, or like a, a dark uh, some of these ducks we're shooting are black and then we come and shoot a white egret and that has the in-camera sensor all over the place but I'm not changing anything because I know for the ambient situation I've got it just the way I want it. I happen to like f8 that's kind of a just a place to start. Uh, there's enough bright sun today we're shooting at ISO 100 and turns out that about 1600 1 1600th of a second and it doesn't matter what I'm shooting out in the sun today the egret the ducks maybe something under the water uh, even some of the, the flowers the foliage I'm leaving it exactly there so once I know that if I if I have to go to a particularly dark setting or, or something unusual maybe a, a, a bird on a flower I know right when I come back into the Sun I just go right to those settings and I don't have to worry about it speaking of shooting in the shadows Craig can you give us some tips about shooting in the shadows or would you just not shoot in the shadows at all considering they dapple your subject so shooting in the shadow itself shooting under brush or where it's it's relatively dark compared to the Sun that's not a problem because you're going to meter for that situation it's going to be a much slower shutter speed of course uh, I still especially when we're shooting like desert hair I still try to keep f8 if I can uh, increase the ISO to make the sensor more sensitive to shoot in the dark I try to change it with ISO and with shutter speed but shutter speed were really limited down to about a 1 1 25th shooting uh, things that move especially in a, in a dark situation what I really don't want two things I don't want I don't want a shadow or dark in the foreground and then light in the background that's too distracting it the, the light distracts you away from the subject also unless I just can't help it I would almost rather not have the shot than have them uh, with dappled light on them because it's just too contrasty and it, it, it doesn't look good so the best situation is when they step into the light and everything else frames them in darkness so 
the answer, my answer to the question is absolutely shoot the subject in the dark but you're going to have a challenge if you meter for that when they step into the sun they're going to be blown out and and all of the the surrounding uh, background is going to be in focus so you, you almost have to meter out in the the daylight that's what because you're hoping the subject moves into the daylight keep that same meter and let everything else around the subject be dark that's perfect that's the perfect perfect situation and you just then all you have to worry about is focus they come into the light in a in a dark situation dark shadow there you get them it's almost a it's a natural vignette and you have zeroed in on the on the subject perfect stay tuned after the slideshow and we're going to tell you what prompted us to buy this brand new apple iphone today it's really a good story it's been six hours officially since we arrived here at the riparian Preserve. Seems like 20 minutes. Half, seems like 30 minutes. We've had so much fun we can't even tell you. We will tell you later yeah. in full detail all of the different species of animals that we saw and everything. Incredible. In a morning. More importantly, we'll show you a lot of them. If there's any reason to support your local parks, this is a perfect example. Yeah, yeah just so much to do out here and so yeah. many people just enjoying it. Um, when we can't get to state and exactly. federal parks all close this municipal park is open and it has just been a it's been a great day it's been a great day for those of you who know Craig and I let me just say we are not even hungry and knowing us that's pretty amazing yeah. normally we probably would have eaten we eat like every two hours and we've been out here for six hours so that would mean we've missed three meals that's how interesting this has been no I'm not I'm not hungry I, at all don't even talk about food I I'm not hungry what are you looking at? We got up at five. Got up at 4:30 this morning to make it to the Riparian Preserve to photograph. And in the process of getting ready to you know, pack up everything, we think that we left our phone and our eyeglasses on the back of the truck, so we couldn't find them anywhere. We did a process of elimination. We knew we'd left with them last night. Uh, 
called the rec center. We, we did everything we could. So we thought, okay, we've nailed it down to these two miles from where we started to making this turn, Greenfield Road. Amazingly, amazingly, we found the phone. iPhone 10 on the side of the road. It had a case on it. Maybe it still does. I can't tell. Can you tell? That's a no. There's other pieces that uh, I mean you can't have a phone without this piece. Clearly. I think that's the antenna actually. And then this other piece. These are the speakers. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a call. Oh, oh. telemarketer. How many days has it hit 90 degrees so far in Arizona? I think today, so far, in. Uh, one, if you count today, one. And it's not 90, I think it's 90 something, 95. We got here with no cash. Luckily, Jackie still has her iPhone and we used Apple Pay. I think that's the first time we've ever done it. Brilliant. We used Apple Pay to buy these massive Gatorades and massive water or we would have probably died. Now, two miles back into the sun, but we have our phone. So. It's all good. Here we go.